Dynamic, talented, focused, inspired, united, champions. All describe the 1998 Kansas State Wildcats, one of college football's most talked about teams. A team that made a run for number one. Blocks a punt. Ball picked up by DeAndre Robinson. Touchdown, Kansas State. Skip through the initial rush to the 40, to the 50. Allen to the 45, to the 40. One man to beat. It's a punter. Bishop runs the option. Play gets off the right side. Leans. Gets in. Touchdown, Kansas State. Back to throw Lindsay. Sets, throws, pass is. Picked off. Jared Cooper. He pitches out to Murphy. Murphy's got some running room to the 10. Murphy to the 5. Dies. Touchdown, Kansas Frank Murphy gets in there from nine yards out. It's away from one man. Gets hit as he throws the football. It's loose. Picked up by Jeff Kelly. Kelly to 20, 15, 10. Kelly to the five. Dies. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown, Jeff Kelly. Expectations were at an all-time high as Bill Snyder entered his 10th season in Manhattan. And with good reason, K-State was coming off its best season in school history. Snyder's 1997 team rolled to an 11-1 record and returned 18 starters from a team that won its final eight games, including an impressive 35-18 win over Syracuse in the Fiesta Bowl. Some preseason publications picked the Cats to win it all, and on September the 5th, in front of a sold-out crowd at KSU Stadium, the Kansas State Wildcats went to work. Indiana State was the opening day opponent, and the Wildcats wasted little time in establishing their dominance. The Cats opened up a 21-0 first quarter lead, and in the second quarter, unleashed what would become one of their biggest weapons. David Allen back at the Kansas State 45. The snap back to Aguilar, gets it away. Good high kick. Allen around the 37 to pull it in. Eludes one tackler to the 40. Allen to the 50. 45, 40, 35, 30. David Allen inside the 25, 20. Angling to the far side, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Kansas State. David Allen has done it again. Second time in his career. A punt return for a touchdown. That one from 63 yards out, and it's 34 to nothing, Wildcats. Quarterback Michael Bishop opened the second half scoring with this 58-yard touchdown strike to Gavin Paris as the Cats rolled up 474 yards of offense. The purple defense was just as impressive. K-State held the Sycamores to only three first downs, blocked a punt for a touchdown, and registered its 10th shutout in the past eight years. K-State dominates the season opener 66 to nothing. Week two brought Northern Illinois to KSU Stadium and in a game that the Wildcats scored 73 points, three of them made history. With two seconds remaining in the first half and the ball spotted at the Husky 48, All-American kicker Martin Gramatica trotted onto the field to try the unthinkable, a 65-yard field goal. I felt, you know, I, I heard the crowd yelling a lot, and I felt I had to make it, you know, since Coach Knight had put me on the field, and he had all the confidence, my teammates did too, so I said, you know, I have to, and then I knew my family's watching on TV, and that's 10 times as hard. So I, I just felt really confident, I just started praying. I said, please, God, help me make it. That's, that's all I could think about at, at that moment. Snap down, Gramatica's kick is up. The kick is long enough. The kick is good. He knocked it in there. 65-yard field goal for Marti Gramatica. It's a new Kansas State record, and the Cats will go to the locker room with a 59-7 lead. I knew I hit it really good because I felt it come off my foot really solid, but then I just kept watching it because me, I knew it was going to get there. It was going to be far enough, but you never know if it's going to drift or not, so I just kept watching it and just watched the referees. Gramatica's field goal was the fourth longest in NCAA history and the longest ever made without a tee at the college or professional level. Big plays were the rule of the day 
as the Wildcats steamrolled Northern Illinois 73-7. Good high booming kick, Allen drifting back. Will haul it in around the 32 yard line. Skip through the initial rush to the 40, to the 50. Allen to the 45, to the 40. One man to beat, it's a punter. 30, 20, 15, 10, five, touchdown. Back to back weeks for David Allen for a punt return for a touchdown for Kansas State. Shotgun formation this time for Jackson. Takes a snap, looks, throws a pass out the flat. Intercepted by Gerald Neesman of Kansas State. Neesman laterals it to Jared Cooper, 10, five, touchdown Kansas State. What a play by Neesman. He picked off the pass and then had the presence of mind to flip it over to Cooper, who runs it in, and the Cats now lead 24 to seven. Michael Bishop is 0 for his last six pass attempts. He's gonna flip one out in the flat. This time to Eric Hickson, makes a catch of the 40, 35, Hickson 30, still on his feet, 25, 20, 15, still going, 10, five, Hickson spinning, turning, touchdown, Kansas State. Oh my, what a run by Eric Hickson. Back to throw, Bishop pumping, looking to the end zone for Darnell McDonald. The throw is up, uh, McDonald goes up, makes a catch, touchdown, Kansas State. McDonald just outfought Buster Sampson in the end zone for the touchdown, and it's 65 to seven, Wildcat. The 73 points were the most by a K-State team in the modern era, as K-State improved to two and zero. The Wildcats open the conference season September the 19th with an eye-opening 48-7 win over nationally ranked Texas on ABC. The Cat defense smothered Heisman Trophy winner Ricky Williams, holding him to a meaningless 43 yards on 25 carries. Linebacker Jeff Kelly introduced himself to Williams early and often with 11 tackles, two forced fumbles, and a 17-yard interception return for a touchdown. Second and 12 for Texas. Applewhite back in the pocket. Sets, looks, throws, passes. Picked off by Jeff Kelly. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Kansas State. Applewhite threw it to number 8. And Kelly gets his first interception of his career. Flipbacks for UT at their own 21. They turn it, hand it off to Ricky Williams. Kelly catches him in the backfield and throws him down for a huge loss. Well, it was. I was happy. And I was, I was happy for my family for my football family and uh, because you know where I'm from there's a lot of alumni and I have good friends that go to Texas and you know they you know they called and did whatever and you know they all get wished I had a good game and uh, it happened and it was just just happened that way. Eric Hickson jump started the Wildcat offense with 124 yards including this 44 yard touchdown run on the opening drive. They snap it back, hand off out of it to Eric Hickson. Hickson to the 40, still on his feet. Eric to the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Eric Hickson. A 44-yard dash, and the Wildcats draw first blood. They lead 6 to nothing. The Wildcats build a 35 to nothing halftime lead as David Allen became the first player in NCAA history to return a punt for a touchdown in three consecutive games. Allen drifting back, will pull it in at the eight. Allen up to the 10 yard line, gets by a couple of defenders, still on his feet to the 15, to the 20. Allen finally still on his feet, stumbling forward to the 30, to the 40, to midfield, 45, 40, 35, 30, 20, 15, 10, five. Oh my goodness, what a run by David Allen. 92 yards, he almost went down, not once, not twice, not three times kept his balance and streaked down the sideline for six more for the Wildcats. Like I usually do, I just, you know, I catch the ball and just try to take the ball up field. And uh, I caught the ball and I made a couple, first couple guys miss and, and I was headed back this way and I started going the other way and then I was going back the other towards the sideline and I almost fell and as I fell, I was getting back up. I had to raise my helmet back up because my helmet had slipped so I adjusted my helmet up and got to the sideline and just showed up the sideline from there. Quarterback Michael Bishop connected with Darnell McDonald for two touchdown passes as McDonald established a career high with 11 catches for 159 yards. The Longhorns would lose only one more game in 1998, but on this day, K-State burnt the orange in all aspects of the game. In a dominating performance, the fifth-ranked Wildcats Route the Longhorns, 48 to seven. The 
Wildcats closed out September and the remainder of the non-conference schedule the same way they began the month, with another explosive performance on both sides of the ball, resulting in a 62-7 win over Northeast Louisiana. Michael Bishop from the K-State passing attack were in high gear as he threw for four touchdowns and a career-high 441 yards. High formation, Goolsby and Charles back to throw as Bishop. Sets, pumps for the end zone, has a man wide open. Darnell McDonald makes a catch, touchdown, Kansas State. Third down and 10, an eye formation behind Bishop. Back, play action fake, looking downfield, throws the ball downfield. Justin Swift at the 10, 5, touchdown, Kansas State. Justin Swift's first touchdown catch of the season, his fourth of his career. This game marked the emergence of freshman receiver Aaron Lockett. The rookie speedster lit up the Indians for 188 yards, a sign of things to come in a season that would see him rewrite his brother Kevin's freshman receiving records. High formation behind Bishop, back in the pocket, Michael looking downfield, throws the ball, gets hit as he throws it, but has a man open, Lockett makes a catch, 40 yard line, Lockett's going to go, 50, 40, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, 98 yard pass play for Kansas State, Bishop to Aaron Lockett. It was definitely um, surprising, I mean I knew I had the opportunity to play and uh, when I scored my first touchdown I was really excited for that, but to get a chance to score another one, end up with 108 yards was a tremendous accomplishment, so uh, I really just took it for what it's worth and thank you for it. The Purple defense turned in another solid performance, holding the Indians to 11 first downs and 74 yards rushing. The Wildcats closed out September in style, scoring 259 points in four games and burying Northeast Louisiana 62-7. K-State's next test came on the road against number 14, Colorado, where the Wildcats had not won since 1973. But this time, Folsom Field belonged to the Wildcats, who would tie a school record with their 13th consecutive victory. Points were hard to come by as two of the nation's top defensive units battled it out for 60 minutes. K-State got on the board first with this 30-yard field goal by Martin Gramatica and then took a 10-0 halftime lead with this two-yard run by Brian Goolsby. Beisel in motion. They turn, hand it off to Goolsby. Rambles in for a touchdown for Kansas State. Brian Goolsby gets in there. It's his seventh career touchdown, second this year. The defense continued to blank Colorado through the first three quarters, and K-State added two more field goals from Martin Gramatica for a 16-0 lead. A couple of late Colorado scores made this one interesting, but the Wildcats would not be denied, winning their first game in Boulder in 25 years. A much anticipated matchup with Oklahoma State awaited the following Saturday. Two weeks earlier, OSU had nearly pulled off a stunning upset of Nebraska. The ABC cameras rolled into Manhattan again, and what they saw was a dominating 52-20 K-State victory. K-State seized control early with this 12-yard touchdown run by Michael Bishop. That was just the beginning of another offensive blitz that would see the Wildcats score on plays of 59, 81, and 46 yards in the first half alone. K-State two of two on third down, conversions have another one here, pass is caught by Lockett and he's gonna go! 50, 40, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Kansas State! Lockett shook off the defender at the point of attack. Third and five from the Cowboy 46. Bishop at a shotgun, takes a snap, looking left. Now being flushed out, throws the ball downfield, Murphy's open, Murphy makes a catch, 20 yard line, 15, 10, cuts back 5, high steps into the end zone for a touchdown for Frank Murphy, his first touchdown is a Wildcat, it's a 46 yard pass reception from Michael Bishop. Third and 10, Bishop back in the pocket, sets, looks, throws the ball down the field, pass caught, knock it, he's going to go again, 50, 40, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, Touchdown, Kansas State, an 81-yard pass play from Bishop to Lockett, who again, after he made the catch, was all by himself. 
Lockett had a sensational day against his home state team as the freshman from Tulsa hauled in five receptions for 167 yards. The defense was paced by Jared Cooper. The hard-hitting safety led the Cats with 10 tackles and one interception in limiting OSU to less than four yards a snap. K-State moves to 6-0 and guns down the Cowboys 52-20. The homestand continued the following week with a 52-7 blitzing of Iowa State as the Wildcats churned out a school record 37 first downs. K-State scored on eight of its 10 possessions as Eric Hickson became K-State's career rushing leader with 117 yards on 23 carries. High formation behind Bishop first and goal to five for the Cats. McDonald to the near side, Lockett to the far side. Bishop runs the option, pitches to Hickson. Eric trying to get a block, does from Goolsby, goes in for six points. What a nice block by Goolsby on the corner, and Eric leaps up and over for a touchdown, and Eric Hickson now is the all-time rushing touchdown leader in Wildcat history after that five-yard jump. I formation behind Adam Helm, turns, hands it off, Eric Hickson. Hickson gets to the 35, up to the 40 to the 41-yard line. It's about a 10-yard pickup, and with that carry, Eric Hickson becomes the all-time rusher in Wildcat history. He just went past Mike Lawrence, who said it a year ago. Eric Hickson is the all-time rusher in Wildcat history. And there was no doubt the K-State offensive line immediately walked over and started shaking hands. They told that team before they went on the field, you've got to get him a record. And whenever you tell an offensive line that, you're going to get some extra emotion. They blew a hole open and allowed him to do it on one play. A banged-up K-State defense played without starters Jeff Kelly, Travis Oaks, and Gerald Neesman, but still held Iowa State out of the end zone until midway through the final quarter. Freshman linebacker Ben Lieber, starting in Kelly's absence, led K-State with 10 tackles. K-State's winning streak reaches 15 as the Cats beat the Clones 52-7. As it did much of the season, K-State's top-ranked defense set the tone the next Saturday in the annual Governor's Cup battle with the Kansas Jayhawks. Wagner in a shotgun. Twins back there with him and Twins to the near side. They snap it back to Wagner. Here comes K-State. He gets hit, spins away. Wagner running to the near side. K-State still taxing down and sacks Wagner at the 11-yard line. It's a loss of 11. Wagner in a shotgun, takes a snap, sets, looks, being rushed. Aaron Howard grabs him, he squirts free. Still running up the field, then gets sandwiched at the 21-yard line. I was back, somebody may have ran down the middle, so I was on that man, then I seen him scrambling, and I seen Jeff coming from one way and Travis coming from the other way. Then when I just seen him hit, it just, it just shook me up inside. It, it was just a great play by both of those guys. And, you know, I think that just set the tone. The rest of the game, they, we showed them that we were out hitting and things like that, and I just think they, you know, that kind of maybe scared them a little bit. I think I was in coverage, and I just remember looking at, I was like, oh no, here they go, and it was, it was unbelievable, you know, and you watch it on, uh, on the replay over and over again, and it was, it was a big time hit, and uh, I'm sure something those guys will never forget. Jay Alexander in their quarterback turns, hands it off to Bulls, hitting the backfield and brought down Jeff Kelly and Jared Cooper there to bring down Bulls. Darren Davis only 18 yards a week ago. Alexander, a little bootleg, K-State hits him, and Darren Howard brings him down. Howard with a sack for K-State, back at the 11-yard line. Third and 12, KU just one of six on third down conversions in the game. Alexander in the shotgun high snap, had to go up to get it. K-State hits him and brings him down. Another sack for the Wildcats. In the shotgun, this time on third and seven. Back to throw, K-State in the blitz, flips it out in the flat, and it's picked off. Mark Simino reaches up and pulls it down at the KU 26-yard line. The Purple defense held KU to an all-time low 44 yards of total offense, while the Wildcat offense ran wild. Cats with the ball right at the 10-yard line. One back, Goolsby behind Bishop. Quarterback draw by Michael. Squirts up to the five. Michael Bishop leaps up and in for a touchdown. Late flag comes out as Bishop hurdles into the end zone. The penalty was against Kansas, so K-State We'll get the 10-yard touchdown run by Michael Bishop. Staggered set behind Bishop. McDonald to the near side. Double tight ends for K-State. McDonald in motion. They turn. 
Roll the pocket to the near side. Bishop wants to throw, lost it to the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Justin Swift. Wide open to the back of the end zone. Swift, second touchdown of the year. Second and short for the Cats at the Hawk nine. They hand it off to Hickson off the right side. Eric to the five, still fighting, dive. Touchdown, Kansas State. Eric Hickson leaping out, stretching out for the touchdown for K-State. High formation, Bishop runs the option. Keeps it, steps inside, five, touchdown, Kansas State. Michael Bishop skips on in there. That's his second touchdown run of the ball game for the Wildcats, and they now lead 46 to 7. High formation, first down for the Cats of the Jayhawk 31. They hand it off to Marlon Charles. Off the left side, Charles cutting back inside, 25 20. Marlon now to the 15 10. Marlon to the 5. Touchdown, Kansas State. What a run by Marlon Charles. 31 yard blast down the near sideline, and K State now tops the 50 point barrier. The offense lit up the Jayhawks for 566 yards of total offense in delivering KU a 54-6 defeat, KU's worst loss in the history of the series. The win was K-State's sixth in a row of the Jayhawks, and K-State has now outscored KU 181-41 in the past four meetings. The scenario was much the same the following Saturday as the Wildcats paid the Baylor Bears a visit. The Wildcats scored two touchdowns in the first four minutes and steamrolled the Bears 49 to six. The Wildcat defense forced two early turnovers and K-State capitalized on both. Look back behind Alfred on third and eight. Back to throw, it gets hit, fumbles the football. It's loose, Damian McIntosh picks it up. 15 down to the 11-yard line and tackled there. He was drilled in the back. I believe it was Travis Litton that hit the quarterback. Alfred McIntosh picked it up, and K-State will take over at the beta 11. Here in a goal line situation, they like to play against the run anyway. They're really going to try to do it. If K-State could run it in and show that they can't stop K-State, it'll be a demoralizing. Option play, pitch to Hickson. Five, Hickson goes in. Touchdown, Kansas State. Nice pitch by Bishop to Eric Hickson, who just gets inside the pylon on the far side of the field. Wildcats jump in front, 6 nothing. Two wide outs in the pattern to the far side. One on the near side. Lagway the one back behind James. First and ten better throw on 49. Back to throw James. Sets, throws, pass, knocked away, and picked off. Mark Simino tipped it up in the air and then pulled it in. His second interception in as many weeks for number 42 out of Smith Center. And K-State gets the second turnover of the game. Second and seven for Kansas State at the beta 37. Play action fake. Bishop back in the pocket looking deep downfield. Throws a ball toward the end zone. Aaron Lockett there. Catch! Touchdown K-State! Aaron Lockett pulls it in for the Wildcats. It's Lockett's sixth touchdown catch of the season. A 37-yard bomb from Bishop and K-State leads 13 to nothing. Michael Bishop threw for 262 yards in the day and Aaron Lockett pulled in seven passes for 157 yards. All-American David Allen also found the end zone again, this time from 77 yards out for his NCAA record fourth TD return of the season. Allen drifting back, and again he gets hit before he can make the catch. Allen picks it up, is going to run with the football. Allen to the 40, to midfield, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, to the 15, 10, 5, touchdown Kansas State. There's all kinds of flags down, but those are on Baylor. They just came down and hit David Allen, which I think was the plan for Bader all along, not to even let Allen try to run the kick back. Baylor managed just two field goals as K-State linebackers Jeff Kelly and Mark Simino combined for 29 tackles. K-State rolls again, 49-6. K-State's 9-0 start propelled the Wildcats to number one in the USA Today ESPN coaches poll and set up a showdown with defending national champion Nebraska. Coach, could you put into words the significance of this game? If you lose it, you're 9-1. and one. If you win it, you're still undefeated. That's 
God's word, word life. Are you aware of the significance of this game, not just to your program, but to the fans around the state, the people in the state of Kansas? Yeah, um, you know, for the fans, you know, I think this is what they've been waiting for all year. You know, like uh, I read the Collegian and every day, you know, it was the countdown till November 14th, you know, still having that. So, um, you know, I think the fans, everybody is excited about this game. It's incredible. I, like I was talking to uh, some of the guys yesterday. I don't even know if they were ranked in the top 25 before Coach Schneider was here, maybe a little bit, a couple of times. And um, to be number one, number three in some of the polls, uh, it's just something that it's unbelievable. You can see it in the people, you know, the, the class. Like when you go to class, people are all excited about it, the newspapers. So it's something that it's just unbelievable. We're going to come ready to play. You know, that's, that's the bottom line. You know, we know what we have to do, and basically it's just up to us to go out and do it. It's, is this a defining moment for Kansas State football, do you think? I think so. I really do. Um, last year was a defining moment when we beat Syracuse in the Fiesta Bowl, but I think uh, this may be one uh, notch high. ESPN's game day crew was in Manhattan to set the stage, and they were greeted by more than 10,000 fans who arrived six hours prior to kickoff. Emotions were at a fever pitch as the standing room only crowd anticipated what would be one of the greatest performances in K-State history. The Cornhuskers took control early with a 17-7 lead. But this was Kansas State's day and the Wildcats would not be denied. First and 10, Nebraska at their own 49. They pitch it back to Alexander. Fumbles the football. It's loose. K-State's got the ball. Jared Cooper leaps on the loose pig, and K-State will take over at their own 45-yard line. Despite losing three first-half fumbles, quarterback Michael Bishop stamped himself as a leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy with one of the most dynamic performances in college football history. Three wideouts in the pattern to the near side. Bishop with a shotgun on third and seven. Michael back in the pocket, sets, guns, the pass. Caught McDonald at the 10-yard line. McDonald still fighting out of the nine-yard line. Pulled down by Irwin Sweeney. It's a first down for K-State. A big third down conversion. 16-yard pickup. Twins to the far side. McDonald to the near side. Play clock at five. They snap it back to Bishop. Michael looks, has time, throws, pass, caught over the middle by McDonald at the five. McDonald down to the two-yard line. It'll be fourth down and goal at the two. They're going to go for it with the ball at the two. Hickson comes in with a play. Bishop under center, six on the play clock. I formation, Paris to the near side. Bishop runs the option play, gets off the right side, leans, gets in, touchdown Kansas State! Bishop just powered his way past the Husker defense, and Kansas State is to within a point of the Big Red. Yeah, they'll actually mark it at the 19, second 11. Bishop at a shotgun, takes a snap, looks downfield. Now he's going to tuck it and run. Bishop to the 25, Michael to the 30, Michael to the 35, 40, Bishop 45, 50, cuts back, running down the middle of the field, inside the 40, inside the Husker, 35, down to the 31-yard line for Michael Bishop. What a run. Mike Brown made the tackle after a 51-yard gain by Bishop. Gould's be the one back behind. Bishop, play action fake, Michael looking downfield, gets hit, fumbles the football, it's loose at the K-State 45, Nebraska has it at the Kansas State 44-yard line, Bishop got hit just as he was about to uncork the football, Nebraska with third down and 11 from the Kansas State 45, Crouch back in the pocket, looking downfield, still looking, lofts a pass toward the end zone, looking for Kenny Cheatham, leaps out, makes a catch, it is a touchdown for Nebraska, what a grab by Kenny Cheatham. Bishop under center, Murphy comes out to the near side in a wide receiver position, back to throw is Bishop, looking downfield, guns the ball downfield, looking for Lockett who's beat his man at the Husker 40, Lockett to the 35, 30, 25, caught from behind at the 18 yard line, there's a bomb from Bishop to Lockett and K-State back in field with it in scoring position at the Nebraska 19. K-State out of the huddle. Second down and 10. Play clock at five. Option play. Bishop keeps it himself. Made a nice move. Bishop 15, 10. Cuts back five. Down to the three yard line. It'll be first and goal to go for Kansas State after the 16 yard run by Michael Bishop. I formation behind Bishop. Double tight end set for Kansas State. Bishop keeps it himself. Gets down to the one yard line. It'll be second and goal for K-State with the ball at the Nebraska one. And Nebraska's saying the football popped out at the end of the play. And I think the officials are agreeing. Nebraska will get the fumble at the one-yard line. First and 10 for the 33. Play action fake again for Crouch. Looking downfield. Guns the ball downfield. A pass is caught inside the five. It's caught by Shevin Wiggins. It'll be first and goal for Nebraska at the three-yard line. Third and goal for the big red with a football at the one-yard line. 
I formation behind Crouch. One wide receiver to the far side. Crouch keeps it himself. Leans did not get in. He's just short of the goal line. Somebody for K-State. It was Damian McIntosh grabbed him and pulled him back before he got over the white line. It'll be fourth and goal now for the Huskers. Brown will attempt what is basically an extra point. Snap is down. Chris Brown's kick is up, and the kick is good. But that's a win for K-State's defense to hold Nebraska to three. 17-7 will score. K-State trails Nebraska. K-State's rally began in the final minutes of the first half when it drove 76 yards in seven plays to trim the deficit to three points at halftime. Play clock at five. Michael calls out the signals, takes a snap, rolls the pocket to the far side, looking downfield, still looking. Guns, pass is caught by Lockett at the midfield stripe. First down, K-State, and he's out of bounds. Clock will stop. Hicks on the one back behind Michael. Bishop back, rolling the pocket, looking downfield. Guns the football to McDonald, who makes a catch at the 18. Darnell down to the 15-yard line, still on his feet. Jukes one man to the 10, to the 5. McDonald leading for the end zone. He's at the one-yard line. It's first and goal to go. What a run by Darnell McDonald down to the big red one-yard line. Michael keeps it himself, goes off the right side, leans. Touchdown, Kansas State. Bishop over from one yard out. It's his second rushing touchdown of the day, his 21st of the season. Kansas State has made three mistakes in the first half, but only go into the locker room down by three points. 17-14, Nebraska the lead here at halftime at KSU Stadium. That momentum continued into the third quarter. Bishop turns, hands it off Hickson. Picking his way forward, breaks free. Eric to the 45, Hicks in the midfield, lowers his shoulder, pops his way down to the Nebraska 43-yard line. Tough run by Eric Hickson. Again, Bishop changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Gonna go to split backs. Three on the play clock. Bishop back in the pocket. Sets, looks, pumps, throws the ball in the out pattern, and McDonald makes a catch of the 10. Darnell to the 5. Darnell McDonald, touchdown! Kansas State! Darnell McDonald gets in there from 18 yards out, and for the first time in this game, Kansas State has the lead, and for the first time since 1991, the Wildcats lead the Huskers. Second and 10, twins on the far side. Crouch under center, back to throw. K-State on a rush. It's a screen pass to Buckholder. K-State snuffs it out and drops Buckholder in the backfield. Back at the 13-yard line. Eric Crouch was 7 of 9 throwing the football in the first half. Here in the third quarter, 1 for 5 for negative 6 yards. They snap it. A low snap to LaFleur. He handles it well. Low kick. David Allen's going to be able to make a return. Catches at the 40-yard line. Comes up field. Gets to midfield. He's on the loose. 45, 40. Allen cuts back. 35. David Allen to the 30. 25, 20, 15. Down to the 10-yard line and knocked out of bounds at the 12-yard line. What a return by David Allen. This place is about to explode. K-State's in the red zone, already up by four points. K-State has an opportunity to get three points. Very important, but not what they wanted. This will be a 25-yard field goal. Remember, Martin missed a 25-yarder last week. He's 19 of 20 from this distance in his career. Garcia to hold, snap down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Kansas State has scored the last 17 points in this game, the lead 24-17, 5.03 left to go third quarter. Nebraska answered back with a 74-yard fumble return for a touchdown. Frank picking his way up the middle, gets about two to the 29, fumbles the football at the end of the play. It's picked up by Ralph Brown, who's racing the other way for a touchdown for Nebraska. No one's going to catch Ralph Brown. Murphy fumbled the ball, and Nebraska's within a point. And a nine-yard TD pass to take a 30-27 lead midway through the fourth quarter. What happened next will be embedded in the minds of Wildcat fans for decades to come. Bishop engineered a flawless 10-play, 80-yard touchdown drive. Bishop and a shotgun, Goolsby the one back with him. Twins to the far side. First and 10. They snap it back to Bishop. Has some time, sets, guns, pass. He is caught by McDonald to 30. Gets up field to the 35. McDonald still on his feet to the 40. McDonald still pushing down the field to the 43-yard line. 23-yard pass play. Second and 10 for K-State with a ball at their 44. Bishop in a shotgun. Takes a snap. Looks downfield. Sets. Guns. Pass. Caught by McDonald to Nebraska 45. Planted at the 43, but it's a first down for K-State. First and 10 for K-State at the Nebraska 44. Bishop in a shotgun. Twins in the backfield with him. Bishop going to step up and run with the football. Gets a good downfield block. Michael to the 40. 35-yard line. Run out of bounds at about the 33 and then tackled out of bounds. Bishop gets into the huddle. Again, K-State's going to have to hurry. There's 10 on the play clock. One back, Goolsby with him, twins to the far side. Gavin Paris set to the near side. 
They snap it back, a low snap to Bishop. He rolls the pocket to the near side, looking. Sets, throws back across his body, wide open. Touchdown, Kansas State! Jordan McDonald, wide open in the back of the end zone, and K-State is in front by three points with 525 left in the game. Michael Bishop can make plays. This time the ball was snapped low, and Michael Bishop started rolling out immediately. He wanted to get out of pocket because he took too long to get the snap. When he rolled out to the right, all the Huskers went with him, trying to cover the receivers. But Darnell McDonald, who started on the right side, went back over the middle of the field and stopped. He was wide open. He just waited in deep in the end zone. And you've got a quarterback. Michael Bishop has great arm strength. Very few quarterbacks can run to the right, turn back, and hit a pass over the middle accurately, but he did. The defense promptly stuffed the Huskers on their final two possessions sparked a wild celebration as Jeff Kelly scooped up a fumble and scored on the game's final play. Crouch in a shotgun, takes a snap, looks downfield, being rushed, gets hit, comes away from one man, gets hit as he throws the football, it's loose, picked up by Jeff Kelly, Kelly at the 20, 15, 10, Kelly to the 5, dives, did he get in? Yes, touchdown, Jeff Kelly, Kansas State leads 40 to 30, the fans are storming the field, but Jeff Kelly picked up the loose football and ran it in for six more points for Kansas State, they lead 40 to 30. You know, it's been said that K-State would never beat Nebraska. It was unthinkable, unimaginable. It's been 29 years that K-State has have to watch the Red fans go home with a win. Well, today the color of choice is purple as K-State has beaten Nebraska for the first time in Manhattan since 1959. They win it 40 to 30, and it is party time in Manhattan. Yeah! I think it was huge, you know, not, uh, not only just for the program and for myself personally, I guess, you know, for five years having never beat him and then, then finally did it. I think it was just so special that you knew everybody in the whole uh, stands, all the people that played, you know, from 30 years ago up to, up to my brother playing, all those guys that wanted to do it and worked to do it and just hadn't been able to do it. I think when we finally won that one, it was, uh, it was just special. It was a huge chip off everybody's shoulders. And uh, it's fun to know that everybody was enjoying it just as much, not only us as players, but to know all the fans, all the secretaries in the buildings, everybody. Uh, it meant as much to them as it did to us. So it was, uh, it was a special day. The final numbers were staggering. K-State outgained the Huskers 512 to 351. And thus served notice that the turnaround was complete. K-State was number one, having knocked off Nebraska for the first time in 30 years. The Wildcats wrapped up their perfect 11-0 regular season the following week with a 31-25 win at nationally ranked Missouri. With their emotional tank running low, the gutty Wildcats rallied for the second straight week. This time in front of the largest crowd to watch a Missouri home game in 14 years. The opening was vintage K-State. The Cats broke on top 10 to nothing with this 10 yard touchdown catch by Gavin Paris and a 48 yard field goal by Martin Gramatica. But the Tigers answered right back scoring twice in the final minutes of the first half to take a 13 to 10 halftime lead. But the Wildcats seized control in the third quarter with touchdown runs by Michael Bishop and Frank Murphy. Bishop turns, hands it off to Marlon Charles, off the left side, has a bit of a run, bit of a hole, Marlon to the 40, 45, Charles on the free, 50, down to the 40, 35, 30, Charles 25, 20, 15, stumbling down the sideline, they'll mark him out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Twins to the near side, 
Goolsby and Charles. Bishop keeps it himself. Touchdown, Kansas State. Off the right side. Michael Bishop's 22nd career touchdown rushing the football. And the Wildcats are back in front, 16-13. On the field, the punt for Missouri is Jared Gilpin, his second punt of the day. He's back at his goal line. A low kick. It's going to bounce near midfield. David Allen scoops it up with the Kansas State 45. Gets up field to midfield. Has a hole. 45-40. Allen 35-30. Trying to get around the punter to the 20. Gets hit and dropped to the 11-yard line. K-State right back in business after Allen's punt return down to the Mizzou 11. High formation behind Bishop. Frank Murphy the eye back. Twins to the far side. Bishop turns, runs into Goolsby, pitches it out to Murphy. Murphy's got some running room to the 10. Murphy to the 5. Dives. Touchdown, Kansas State. Frank Murphy gets in there from 9 yards out of the Wildcats. Lead 23-13. to Missouri closed the gap to 24-22 in the fourth quarter. But another Murphy touchdown run preserved K-State's perfect season. Under center, hands it off Murphy, right side, gets hit at the goal line, loses the football, and gets it back for a touchdown for Kansas State. It went pop free from Frank Murphy, but he alertly gets up on it, dives on the ball in the end zone, and K-State now has a lead of 30 to 22. Yeah, it was huge. You know, it was the whole as the year went on. Each win, you know, makes it that much trickier. You come down, and you got you to gotta keep winning games. You want to go undefeated, and that's not an easy thing to do uh, these days at all. Every team's shooting for you, aiming at you. And uh, we went in there, Missouri played a great game, and we, uh, we did some good things. We did a lot of bad things, but we came out with the win. We were able to go home knowing we uh, would win 11-0, and that was a huge, huge triumph for us. K-State does not have to take another snap, and the Wildcats are going to complete their first ever undefeated regular season in college football. The Cats win a hard-fought win today over the Missouri Tigers, 31-25. K-State now has won 19 straight games. They've won 15 straight conference games, and they have won six straight over the Missouri Tigers. K-State 31, Mizzou 25. The victory over Missouri gave K-State the Big 12 North Division crown and qualified the Wildcats for the Big 12 championship game against Texas A&M at the TWA Dome in St. Louis. The Wildcats charged out of the gate and took a 10-0 first quarter lead when Michael Bishop hooked up with Justin Swift on this 16-yard touchdown pass. A&M added a field goal, but the Wildcats regained the momentum on the first play of the ensuing drive. Long count, back to throw Bishop, pumps, looks right, now looking back left, looking downfield for Darnell McDonald, has a step, makes a catch, 30, McDonald 20, McDonald 15, 10, 5, and pulled into the end zone, touchdown, Kansas State, it is a 64-yard, 66-yard touchdown pass, Bishop to Darnell McDonald, and Kansas State leads 16-3 over the Aggies. The Aggies trimmed the deficit to 17-12. but K-State appeared to put the game away with 10 third quarter points. This will be a 45 yard attempt from Dramatica. He made one from 47 early in the game. The kick is high enough, long enough, and the kick is good. Martin Gramatica hits one from 45 yards. Out of K-State now leads 20 to 12 with 431 left to go third quarter. Live formation behind Bishop. Michael turns, play action fake. Bishop looking downfield. Guns the ball downfield, a pass is caught. McDonald at the AM 29-yard line. A 20-yard pickup on the play, and K-State has it now at the Aggie 29. Back to throw Bishop. Looks left, now looks right. Throws the ball down the middle of the seam. Lockett makes a catch to the five. Lockett's got it at the five-yard line. He's blasted at the end of the play by Brandon Jennings, but hangs on. Lockett and Paris to the near side. McDonald to the far side. Play clock at three. Bishop under center. Going to go the quarterback draw. Michael to the two. Leans, dies, gets in. Touchdown! Kansas State, Michael Bishop. A five-yard touchdown run of the Wildcats lead now, 26 to 12. Wildcats took a 27-12 lead into the fourth quarter, but saw their dreams of playing for a national championship disappear in the midst of a Texas A&M rally that sent the game to overtime. The Aggies prevailed in double overtime, winning one of college football's most exciting games of the year, 36 to 33.
K-State's goal of a national championship and undefeated season was gone. And still, almost 35,000 Purple fans greeted the Wildcats in San Antonio for the Alamo Bowl against Purdue. But the disappointment was too much to overcome, and the Boilermakers pulled out a heart-wrenching 37-34 win in the final seconds. National championships don't come easy. Just ask Bobby Bowden, Tom Osborne, and Philip Fulmer. But make no mistake, K-State will be back again in 1999 to make another run for number one. I think we're really excited about next year. We've got uh, you know, a lot of guys returning. You know, we're losing some great uh, seniors this year, but guys will be able to step up. And you know, uh, I think that next year we're going to have the goal to be you know, the best uh, team that's ever played at Kansas State and, and nothing less. So you know, we just got to work uh, to achieve that, and we're going to have to work hard. But I think we can do it with uh, just diligence and uh, I mean, just hard work. I think in the future it's just going to keep going up. This group of guys that, that got coming back are going to be a special bunch. And uh, a lot of people want to try to doubt them, but they're going to come back harder than ever. Uh, they got a lot to prove. And I think this program is going to continue to uh, just step up. K-State's dominance on the field in 1998 was well recognized with a flood of postseason honors. For the third time in his 10 seasons at K-State, Bill Snyder was named National Coach of the Year, this time receiving the prestigious Bear Bryant Award from the Football Writers Association of America and the Bobby Dodd Award, along with the honor from the Walter Camp Foundation. The All-American traditions established under Snyder also continued in 1998 with four Wildcats earning first team All-America honors. Heading the list, K-State's incomparable quarterback, Michael Bishop. Bishop simply did it all in 1998, stamping himself as perhaps the most dynamic player in all of college football. He finished as the runner-up to Ricky Williams in the voting for the Heisman Trophy and won the Davey O'Brien National Quarterback Award. Linebacker Jeff Kelly earned first-team All-America honors from the football writers and the football news. His dominant play throughout the season also earned runner-up honors in the voting for the Bronco Nagurski Award, given annually to the nation's top defensive player. K-State special teams were truly that. Place kicker Martin Gramatica earned first-team All-America honors for the second year in a row and finished his career as K-State's all-time leading scorer. And sophomore David Allen electrified KSU Stadium and the nation with his flair for the spectacular. Four punt returns for touchdowns en route to first team All-America honors. Those four were joined by six other Wildcats as first team all Big 12 selections. Wide receiver Jardell McDonald, who led the conference with 75 catches and set a K-State single season mark with 1,092 receiving yards. Offensive tackle Ryan Young, captain of the offensive line that allowed only 14 sacks on the season. Defensive end Darren Howard, K-State's pass rushing specialist who led the conference with 10 and a half sacks. Linebacker Mark Simino, who led one of the nation's top defensive units with 95 tackles. Strong safety Jared Cooper, a hard hitting safety with a nose for the ball. And Lamar Chapman, K-State's do it all safety in the defensive backfield. While a total of 10 Wildcats received first team all conference honors, K-State wasn't done yet. Nine more Wildcats were named all conference, giving the Wildcats an incredible 19 players on the all Big 12 team. Second team honors went to wide receiver Aaron Lockett, K-State's all time freshman receiver. Offensive guard Jeremy Martin, a key figure on K-State's O-line for the past four seasons. Linebacker Travis Oaks, the veteran, heady leader of the Wildcat defense. And defensive tackle Damian McIntosh, perhaps the most versatile lineman in all of college football. Honorable mention honors went to running back Eric Hickson, K-State's all-time leading rusher. Defensive end Joe Bob Clements and KSU Stadium all-time favorite fullback Brian Goolsby, the Big 12's most feared blocking back. Tight end Justin Swift, a prime touchdown target in many of K-State's biggest wins. 
and talented sophomore center Randall Cummins. What a year. K-State closes the regular season 11-0, wins 19 consecutive games, rises to number one in the coaches' poll, beats Nebraska for the first time in 30 years, wins at Colorado for the first time in 25 years, and captures the Big 12 North Division Championship. Further proof that the Kansas State Wildcats have arrived as one of college football's best teams, best programs, and best stories.